Hello and welcome everyone to the Advanced Water Treatment Operator Certification Background and Overview Webinar. My name is Alec Mackey. I am with CWEA staff and I'll be the technical administrator on this webinar. If you are having any problems, please put a note in the chat box. I'm happy to help you out, do the best I can. If you have a question, we're going to get a lot of questions, we know it please be sure to put those questions into the Q&A box. That chat box will go right to the Q&A folks so they can get your questions answered. Again, welcome. I'd like to introduce Toby Roy. Toby is retired from the San Diego County Water Authority and she is chair of the Advanced Water Treatment Operator Certification Program. Toby, over to you. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome all of you to today's webinar. Um, I'm gonna make a couple of comments on the background of the program and then what we're gonna cover in the webinar and then we'll move into the speakers from there. Um, the Advanced Water Treatment Operator Certification Program is something that was requested by water and wastewater agencies and the State Water Board. Um, and uh, American uh, Water Works Association, California Water Environment Association have um, worked collaboratively to develop this program. The use of advanced water uh, treatment in potable reuse projects and the need to provide um, clean water and protect public health have been drivers for the certification program. Um, this program is currently a voluntary certification program and it will apply broadly to a wide range of advanced water treatment used in both water and wastewater facilities in addition um, to the advanced water treatment for potable reuse. Um, there's a significant effort that's been made by staff from AWWA and CWEA um, there's been active participation with the support of the water and wastewater agencies, consultants, and staff from the State Water Board. Um, I will say it's, it is still a work in progress. We're getting really close uh, to launching this certification, but you'll hear um, from the speakers about where we're at in the um, process. And there's some things that are complete and moving forward, and there's other things uh, they'll let you know that we're still working on um, and how you can access um, more information as it comes out. Um, the purpose of uh, this webinar today is to provide you with an update on the program, and we do have several speakers. Um, we'll give you information on the value and benefits of the program to operators and agencies from a utilities perspective. Um, background on development of the program, what, it, what are the qualifications for operators to become certified, how you apply and take, apply for the exam and take it, and some of the resources um, that are available. And so the way we're going to work through this is the speakers are going, we're going to work through all of the speakers who will um, provide you with the information. Um, this will be followed by a question and answer session. As you're listening um, to the webinar, um, as uh, Alec mentioned, there's a, a question and answer box. You can just go ahead and input any questions you might have um, during the presentation, but they will be answered at the end of the presentation. Um, we do, uh, plan to provide uh, later on the website uh, some frequently asked questions. So if we don't get to everybody's questions today, it could be included later on the website. Um, also, um, during the webinar, we're going to be doing a poll to estimate uh, the timing and interest of operators for signing up um, for the certification. So I'm going to um, move next to introducing the first uh, speaker. Uh, Yan uh, Zhang is a senior civil engineer with Long Beach Water Department's Operation Bureau. Um, she oversees the plant, uh, treatment plant control room operation and manages regulatory programs, um, process optimization and SCADA. She, does, she is a civil engineer with a master's and PhD with over 10 years experience. Um, Yan has been um, actively involved 
in the Advanced Water Treatment Operator Certification Committee, and she is also chair of the uh, American Waterworks Association Certification Board. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Jan. Well, Toby, thank you for the introduction. So I will go over some of the um, background information about the Advanced Water Treatment Operator Certification and um, focus on what it is, why and how it's developed, and also the minimum qualification to apply for this certification. So first, uh, what is AWTO certification? The AWTO is a certification program evaluating and certifying operators' competency and their knowledge and experience in, in operating treatment facilities using advanced water treatment processes, which includes the following nine processes as we defined. So it has a membrane filtration, membrane desalination, biological filtration, membrane bioreactor, iron magnets removal, absorption exchange, advanced oxidation, disinfection, and also finished water chemical uh, stabilization. And because the AWT processes were not widely used in conventional water or wastewater treatment plants, existing state drinking water or wastewater treatment operator certification exams, they don't test the AWT related knowledge. So the AWTO really was developed specifically to fill this gap. And as the we mentioned earlier, the AWT certification is a voluntary certification. It can work as a supplement to existing state operator certification. So if the operator holds a current state issued grade three, four, or five, either drinking water uh, treatment certification or wastewater treatment certification, they can start to apply to um, AWT3 and then move up the ranks to hold the advanced water treatment certifications. And why is AWTO certification developed? It's really a response to the call from the water industry. And over the past decades, the number of AWT facilities has been increasing uh, a lot, particularly in the water reuse field. But because of the complexity of AWT processes and the risk and concerns associated with reuse water, the public regulators and industry, they need to be assured that AWT facilities are operated by competent operators that have the knowledge and experience required. They know what they are doing to operate the facilities reliably at all times so that public health can be protected. But as we know, the current state water um, certification programs, they don't really test those um, knowledge areas. And also the State Water Board's Direct Portable Reuse Expert Panel has identified that operator training and certification is a concern for DPR. And again, there's also the regulatory issue that operators working in recycled water plants, currently they don't receive drinking water treatment credits, so we need to move towards resolving those issues. So listening to all those voices, and also we have conducted the survey, and it shows that uh, there is strong industry support for this program, with overall 88% surveyed favorable to an uh, AWT program. And the majority of the water agencies, about 53% would encourage their operators to obtain AWT certification. And some agencies even indicate that they will make it a requirement for their operators. So with all those findings and different voices coming from the industry, in 2015, there's a committee formed to drive the development of the certification program. The committee members come from all areas of the industry, including utility, operation and management, regulatory agencies, industry group, and consultants and education group. And those majority of the voices come from the utility, but of course, we also include the regulator, regulators, including the state water board staff coming from both the division of drinking water and also the operator certification. And of course, the, the um, staff from uh, AWWA Cal Nevada section and the CWE, and those volunteers and the subject matter experts uh, form the committee to drive the development of the certification. So how is a certification program developed? 
It's actually a very complicated, rigorous, and prescribed process that follows the credentialing industry standards. The program is developed in six phases, including program analysis, job analysis, program development, exam development, exam delivery, and program marketing. So for phase one, program analysis, the volunteers and SMEs, they define the program goals. We want to develop an AWT operator certification that's, that's going to work for both agencies, big and small, and providing benefits without being overly restrictive and affecting future qualified operator pool. And this is actually consistent with the recommendation from the California Urban Water Association white paper, Portable Reuse Operator Training and Certification Program. And the program also needs to address portable reuse operator training and certification and removing the potential roadblock for DPR. And also really help address the current regulatory issues with treatment operators at recycled water facilities. So we set our goals. And for phase two, job analysis. The subject matter experts, they define the knowledge and skills expected for AWT operator. For example, um, I want to show you some of the sample task statements. For membrane, operators need to be able to recognize and correct problems in the system. And they need to calculate membrane surface areas and calculate daily membrane water production. And similarly, for advanced oxidation, operators need to calculate oxygen dosing and measure its residual. And they also need to know how to track major process control inputs. And up to today, we have completed the job analysis and we have written exam questions, determined the, uh, the minimum qualifications, and we also discussed and evaluated possible regulatory changes with the regulators involved in this discussion. And there is a, still a lot of ongoing work, including finalized exam forms and details of the exam delivery, and outreach to operators and utilities so that uh, you are aware that AWTO certification is available. And of course, develop an educational and a training program to help operators prepare for the certification uh, exam. And the so exam forms for each grade has been decided with uh, 100 questions for grade three and 85 questions for grade four and 70 questions for grade five. And those questions cover areas in source water, treatment processes, operation and maintenance, regulations and safety, and so on. And for the minimum qualifications needed to earn the AWT certifications, we listed the qualifications needed over here. For AWT3, at least a state drinking water T3 or wastewater grade 3 treatment operator certification is required for you to apply and you don't need additional experience. Once you pass the AWT3 um, exam, you are issued the certification. And for AWT4, you need an AWT3 certification and also two years of experience in one or more listed AWT processes. Those are in the nine processes we defined earlier. And also pass the AWT4 exam. And for AWT5, you need the AWT for four certificate and three years of experience. And out of those three years, one year of experience must be obtained in at least two AWT processes. And of course, pass the exam for AWT5. So please note that experience can be obtained prior to you taking any AWT exam. So if you have worked in AWT facilities for many years prior to this certification being available, and you can actually um, progress through the AWT ranks without obtaining experience between grades. But there is a minimum 90-day interval required between taking exams for different grades. So I would say the fastest one can obtain an AWT-5 certification is uh, six months after they first take the AWT-3 exam. So now I'm going to turn it over to Alex to talk about the exam process. Alex? 
Hi, Ann. Thanks for that. Uh, Toby, I believe we have Fernando from LA Sanitation with us now. Okay, so um, I'll, I, I think we're going to go to Fernando um, next. So I'll go ahead um, and introduce uh, Fernando. Um, Fernando Gonzalez is a registered civil engineer in California and certified environmental engineer. Um, he he has a engineering uh, bachelor's and master's degree, and he is currently the Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant Manager in the City of Los Angeles um, Clean Water Program. And uh, so Fernando, their agency is very interested in the Advanced Water Treatment Operator Certification Program. And he brings to us today um, an agency utility perspective on um, why, why this certification is important and how it fits with what they do. So right now I'll go ahead and turn it over to Fernando. Uh, hello everyone. Um, I need to first apologize to everyone. I'm having some di technical difficulties to upload my presentation actually. I can only join the meeting over the phone. So I'm going to do my best to go over my presentation and, uh, <clears throat> over the phone. So uh, as it was said before, um, a, right now I am the plant manager of a water reclamation plant that we produce purified water. So we do have an advanced water treatment facility here in the plant. And um, one of the things that I'd like you to, to put into, con con into perspective for everybody is the water situation in California today. Um, we have become accustomed to the, our dependence of imported water, especially in Southern California, where you know water is scarce. So what we're seeing here is a shift on the paradigm. See, in the past, um, I remember when I started in the uh, wastewater business, um, the, the uh, standard MO was just to uh, put the biggest pipe in the ground and bring the wastewater the quickest possible into the treatment plant. And once in the treatment plant, just clean it enough so that we could just uh, pretty much get rid of it uh, through an outfall, an ocean outfall or to another receiving waters. Now, what is what's happening right now is that wastewater, for at least for us, have become a commodity. Uh, we are the uh, second largest city in the city. Our service area is about 600 square miles. That includes 29 contract agencies. Um, the entire pipe network is about 6,800 miles of sewer. We have uh, four uh, wastewater re uh, uh, reclamation plants, uh, mine being one of them. And mine, it's the one that uh, processes about 12 million gallons per day of advanced purified water. So um, for the longest time, like I said, uh, we have been uh, treating and disposing of uh, about um, a 463 million gallons per day. But those days, those days are over. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of you were keeping up with the news, but our mayor just launched a very aggressive plan to uh, give zero discharges from one of our largest water reclamation plants, the Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant, uh, by the year 2035. And even through the, legisla through the legislation, we're seeing um, a proposed legislation that is gonna curtail the amount of discharges from uh, treatment plants into the receiving waters. I believe initially the Hertzberg bill was targeting a 50% reduction for um, 20 uh, for uh, 2020 and a 95% by 2040. So, at least for us, we have the goal of uh, zero discharges into the ocean awful uh, by 20, 2035. So, our goal is to maximize reuse. Uh, we need to. We are looking into optimizing flow routing into collection systems to bring the flow where one of the floor treatment plants where it's needed. But one of the things that we need to do is that we need to make it happen on a sustainable practice. Um, we have a, there's a technological sophistication. Um, it's, uh, 
we are need to go beyond what is called the conventional treatment that we all are accustomed to, the uh, preliminary, primary, secondary, and tertiary treatment. Now we begin to introduce advanced treatment that would include some kind of a, a reverse osmosis microfiltration or some other uh, uh, a nanofiltration technology, so membrane technology, followed by a very ultraviolet or you know some kind of advanced oxidation process for this infection. So that uh, at least for the time being, we're going to be using the uh, indirect portable reuse. Now, one of the things that we're experiencing here in our treatment plan is the level of sophistication of beyond the conventional treatment is very great. Uh, the chemi the uh, chemical parameters, the process itself requires that everybody has to be well qualified and well trained in order to be posted into the advanced water purification facility. Um, so the requirements, it goes beyond conventional treatment. But then again, uh, the understanding of conventional treatment on water quality, it's uh, fundamental because a, uh, the advanced water treatment would be as successful as the quality of water that gets into the advanced purification facility. So. What we think uh, uh, this is going to do is that we're looking for in our advanced treatment operators, uh, first of all, is some kind of a certification that would allow them to demonstrate the level of proficiency that is going to ensure a steady and reliable operations of the advanced water purification facility. So the operation qualifications are going to be key. Uh, then. Pretty much there will be uh, the two areas of certification that we're going to be looking into is the uh, membrane technology process, you know, the advanced process for membrane technology, and of course the uh, um, mastering of the advanced oxidation process for disinfection. Uh, then again, the operators have to be qualified so that they could do an advanced monitoring of the process. Uh, understand the control that it requires for all the parameters that uh, the uh, purification process requires and provide an adequate response um, to troubleshoot or to respond to something that is not going as planned. So what we need to do is uh, we are developing this program to ensure adequate population of operators. Uh, we have a specialized uh, training for those who wants to be part of the advanced purification process, but then even on the post themselves, uh, we are creating specifications that we require either to be exposed to the training or a level of proficiency that will ensure that the operator it's not only comfortable but also it's efficient and effective while he is on post. Um, like many treatment plants, that uh, there are operating today in in um, in California, uh, ours is uh, fully automated. Uh, we have a distributed control system that um, pretty much um, oversees the treatment process, but it's key that the operator needs to be able to not fully understand and provide effective and efficient response for the treatment process. So, um, with that, uh, that's pretty much what I got uh, for the uh, a, uh, uh, for you guys today, and uh, I would like to answer any questions that you know my uh, the the uh, attendees or the other fellow panel members might have for me. Okay, and um, Fernando, we're we're taking all of the questions on the Q and A. Okay. So we're going to get to the questions at the end after um, all of the speakers. Perfect. Perfect. So just hold on and um, that will come. And I, I do want to add a couple of comments and on to um, Fernando's presentation uh, for, you know, this operator um, certification program. Operators have a lot on their plate right now with all the different regulatory requirements and the things that they're responsible for. And uh, the management of the agencies and their support of um, encouraging operators to participate 
in the program is really critical to the success of this program um, because the management recognition of the value of that um, from from what I've been hearing is something that will help get operators in to uh, participate in the program and overall participating is going to raise the level of expertise um, within the whole of the water industry and we do see the state board in the future potentially setting requirements um, particularly for potable reuse plants um, for uh, for uh, operators to become certified so there's a lot of benefit to the agency both the agencies and um, the operators uh, to get engaged and become certified in this program. So next, um, I'm going to turn over. Uh, next speaker is um, Alec Mackey, and he is CWEA's Director of Communications and Marketing. He's been with CWEA since 2015, and he is the contact person for AWTO outreach materials including brochures and presentations. And there's a lot of uh, different presentations going on about um, this uh, program. And you can talk to him if uh, you need a presentation. And um, so he's gonna uh, walk through um, how you would sign up uh, for taking the exam. So turn it over to you, Alec. Great, thanks, Toby. Hello, everybody. Um, I'll be walking through the procedural process for signing up for the AWTO exam. Um, this is non-technical, which is perfect for me. So um, this is just uh, getting you connected with the certification program. It's important to note that we are in the early stages here. We have not launched the exam, the application form, the handbook, um, they're all very close to being completed and lots of hardworking volunteers and staff to get those done. So you're getting an early preview here. These are going to be the steps to get signed up, but you'll notice I don't go into too much detail because I want you to see the actual documents, the actual application forms and use those. So to get ready for this certification, uh, it's important to understand that this is professional certification in the same vein as um, water, wastewater, operator certification, any of Cal Nevada's certification. It is different than training or educational programs where you might get a certificate um, for completing the course route. This certification program was developed using a nationally recognized process and, as Yan mentioned, involved many, many stakeholders. Um, to define the roles and responsibilities of an advanced water treatment operator. Individuals who meet these eligibility requirements and pass the exam, congrats, you are granted the use of an AWTO credential. The most important way you can build your skills and knowledge is practicing and working inside an advanced water treatment facility. Um, Again, two of the documents we're working on that will be critical for you to reference to get ready for this exam and to apply is the AWTO Candidate Handbook and the reference list of exam items. We'll provide in detail each of the subject areas and even the percentages that will be on each of the exam levels. This uh, Candidate Handbook will be available soon. Be sure you're signed up for the AWTO email list uh, on the website because we're going to email you every time a publication is ready and the exam is launched. So how can you get ready? Um, we can actually, we, part of these associations are the credentialing or certification bodies. They are firewalled. They cannot require, provide, approve, disapprove, accredit, or endorse any training program. Uh, members of the committee who wrote the exam need to stay firewalled and away from the exam to protect it. Um, but here is what we've heard are possible training uh, locations. Cal Nevada conferences coming up next week or CWA's conference uh, in Palm Springs in April. We may uh, develop a workshop as well. 
The Southwest Membrane Operators Association is a fantastic training outfit and they offer a certificate, take the class, take an exam, all in one sitting. That could potentially help you understand the membrane portions of the exams. If your agency is part of WORF, or what was formerly known as WORF, <laughs> they have developed a series of AWT training modules broken into each advanced technology. Those are designed to train operators. They are available through your agency's WORF subscription, or you could go through the Cal Nevada Training Committee or the CWA Training Committee, and WERF is allowing us to request those modules to provide to a CWA trainer and to train on location. Other great resources are all the regular ones, the manuals of practice. Cal State Office of World Programs promises they will have a textbook on advanced water treatment technologies this fall of 2019. It's good stuff, it is in the works, and they're working really hard to get it done. Other things that we've heard about is several community colleges have approached members of our committee and said that they already offer advanced water treatment classes. Manufacturers training is great. All the regulatory bulletins and understanding the safety procedures that are out there in our industry are incredibly important. And then of course, private trainers um, can fill in here. And it's important to really understand like all of water certifications, no one workshop, no one class, no one textbook is gonna get you ready. It is a mixture of experiments, sorry, experience, reading some of the test, uh, textbooks, and on the job training that's gonna get you really prepared for that exam. So we will be offering a series of workshops, I'm so sorry, um, the Cal Nevada education team is working with a trainer. It looks like we'll have several of these in Northern and Southern California. They are two and a half day training sessions. Again, to emphasize this importantly, one workshop does not prepare you to take the exam, but it can help you broaden your experience and knowledge about advanced water treatment technologies. The same old stuff applies. The best way to study for these exams is in a group. It'll motivate you, it'll keep you focused, and it will create that team collaboration where you're helping each other out, filling in knowledge gaps. So form a study group, get going uh, in working together on getting ready for the exam. Flashcards are, everybody in our sector uses flashcards. You have a topic, you have the answer, and that'll help you memorize those important safety topics or regulatory topics that are key on the exam. And you can find those key areas again in the candidate handbook. Always reach out for help. There is no one AWTO certified right now. This is brand new, brand new, but don't be afraid to ask for help. The senior folks really know their stuff. Um, and finally, study, study, study. Okay, so as I said, the key is the Advanced Water Treatment Candidate Handbook available from the two associations. We're gonna email everybody as soon as it's ready. It has a ton of information on getting signed up for the exam. So that's your first step in signing up. The second step is to remember those um, minimum qualifications. There's gonna be an exam application. You're going to list your experience. Um, so these are the ones that Yan went over and feel free to ask more questions about it here in a moment. The third step to signing up for the exam is to download the application form, so a PDF Again, we'll email you just as soon as that's ready. It'll be on the awtoperator.org website or on Cal Nevada's website. The review committee. So it's really important to remember that this program was built and developed by water professionals for water professionals. So in this step, your application is gonna be reviewed by a volunteer administrator from uh, the AWTO group, and they're gonna make sure you meet those minimum qualifications. Um, it's important to know the people behind the ACE exam are exactly like you. They are fellow water treatment operators and wastewater operators. Once your application is approved, a computerized testing center will contact you. We're not quite ready to tell you the vendor, but we will be soon. That uh, computerized-based testing center will help you arrange your appointment. They have hundreds of locations throughout the state, so you'll go to that center. Um, if you've taken a CWA exam or any other computerized-based 
exam, you're used to these programs and these centers, it's really important to know what you're walking into ahead of time. They can be a bit intimidating, but they're there to help you. They will ask for ID. They need to formally ID you. And again, the handbook will list the specifics of what's needed here. And they'll give you the rules, what you can take in and what will be inside the testing center. And again, refer to that candidate handbook so you know ahead of time what's gonna happen. That way you're really prepared when you head into the computerized based testing exam. The nice thing about CBTs as they're called, instant results, no waiting. <laughs> Who knows if that's good or bad, but you will know as soon as you are done with that exam. Um, if you pass, congratulations. You now have the credential advanced water treatment operator. The committee is proud of you. You've worked hard, you've earned it. Um, your paperwork with your certificate will arrive from Cal Nevada by the postal mail within 30 calendar days. So what can you do next? You can move up, you can get promoted, you can go to work um, at advanced water treatment operator uh, with a credential. You can also then take the exams in order. So the committee has decided they must be taken in, in order. Um, AWTO first, excuse me, AWTO three first, AWTO four, then AWTO five. You must wait a 90 day interval between them. Your exam application, that first one you put in can list all of your experience. That way you're telling the volunteer administrator whether you qualify for just the first exam or all the exams, they keep in their system your information. So you don't have to fill that in again. You can quickly move up the grades with waiting these 90 day intervals. You can quickly move through the exams as fast as you want, as long as you meet those minimum qualifications. Now, it does happen, we've all done it. If you go in, you take the exam and you don't meet the cut score, man, you know, it's okay. It's so important to know that this was written by subject matter experts, professional operators, senior engineers. They, this exam is designed to be challenging because AWT operators have mission critical responsibilities for that facility, for public health, for their agency. So getting this credential is challenging. And as you know, with all of the water exams, sometimes you don't pass, that's okay. Um, it's important to keep on, get that study group together. So, you know, a new dawn, you go in and you just do it all over again. You have to wait that 90 day interval before applying to take the computerized based exam once again study, get that study group going, really keep going. You can do it. Many of us have been here. You take the exam once, you don't pass, you take it again and you pass. Um, so we really wanna encourage and support everyone and know that the subject matter experts are not trying to trick you or play any brain games. They want to make a really um, a high level uh, exam that complies with industry standards. And so that's what the associations have aimed to do in the committee. This is several years from now, but renewing, here's how that works. These certificates are good for three years. You'll need to collect 24 continuing education hours of advanced water treatment. Um, and only a certain percentage can be safety related. Again, the candidate handbook has all of these details. So in three years from now, uh, you, to renew, you'll fill out the renewal application, a small fee to Cal Nevada, and collect those co continuing education hours, and you're good to renew your certification. As I mentioned many times, all the answers will be in that candidate handbook. We're going to email you the instant it's ready. It is so close to being done. So we'd like to get ready for Q&A. Please be entering your questions. Uh, across from Fernando's presentation, from Yan's presentation about why the certification was developed, or from this procedural um, presentation. Stephen Gardner is going to take over here in a moment. I just want to take a quick moment. Uh, let's give, as you're entering your questions, um, let's give the audience a poll. So uh, we'd like to know, let me see if I can launch this. So it should be up on your screen. Uh, what we'd like to know is, 
Who thinks they might be ready to go and take the certification exam? You wanna take it right away, three to six months from now, six to 12 months from now? Yes, not sure. All right, wow, we have seven people, nine people, 10 people, they are ready. Congratulations, thank you so much for that interest. And with that, Toby, I'll turn it back to you and Stephen Gardner. Okay, I I think I'm just gonna turn it um, turn it right over uh, to see. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Stephen Garner is here. Yeah, so Stephen's gonna um, take all the questions and answer them for you. And um, if uh, if uh, panelists need to weigh in on the um, answers, they will as well. So we'll uh, turn over to you, Stephen. And Stephen is. Uh, the uh, AWWA staff person who's been working on developing this program um, since we started it. So uh, go ahead, Stephen. Great. Well, five questions came in so far. Each of them has been answered um, online. Uh, oh, here's another one. Um, the first one came from John and it regarded um, can a bachelor's degree in environmental engineering and a grade five state cert bypass any of the qualifying experience for the grades four and five certifications? Um, the answer to that is holding a grade five treatment certification in either wastewater or uh, drinking water is a positive step forward, but it doesn't bypass, it just meets um, per, uh, so long as the experience pertains to AWT processes. So once the applications are available, each applicant may document their experience with AWT processes, and the applicant's documentation will go in, be assessed for meeting the requirements for advanced water treatment three grade, and then also be pre-evaluated for grades four and five. Each applicant must apply for each grade level at the time one's ready to sit for the um, given grade level certification exam. So when you go for four, you go to five, you'll submit another application, but your previously submitted experience with advanced water treatment processes will already have been evaluated if they were achieved at the time that you set um, submitted your application for three. Um, a bachelor's degree in any given field is not a part of the minimum qualifications. The minimum qualifications are that you have achieved and are holding a current um, grade three certification from a state in um, water or wastewater treatment and that you have advanced water treatment unit process, uh, processes experience for grades four and five. Dale asks, where can we find study materials? And about that time, Alex was um, attempting to answer uh, spontaneously by currently presenting the potential study sources. The list that was discussed today is, not, uh, is representative and not exhaustive. Additional education and training options are anticipated over time. Um, Alex asked about the distribution of questions for the grade levels being available online. And yes, the same distribution table that was presented by Yin Zhang in this webinar showing the domains and the target percentages of questions or items per domain will be part of the Canada Handbook. The Canada Handbook is in the final stages of development and should be available on the awtoperator.org website by April 2019. Um, Robert asked, if we can get copies of the PowerPoints. And yes, this webinar is being recorded for later viewing and a link will be made available on the awtoperator.org website. Will we email attendees to the meeting the new materials or available or do we need to sign up? Uh, it was asked by Daniel and my answer is yes. Signing up on the awtoperator.org website is your best move to assure notification of future information releases. The candidate handbook with the application form is in the final stages of document preparation, uh, preparation and should be posted on the website in April 2019. A few other questions have come in that I haven't responded to um, in a documented form, but let me just take them as they come. Is it 24 CEUs or contact hours? It's contact hours. Uh, you may use um, CEUs in the 10 to one ratio that they are um, as your submission, but all we require is contact hours, not something from an accredited organization, such as an ISAT accredited or a Western Association of States and Colleges accredited. Uh, it just needs to be contact hours. 
similar to what the state requires. Um, has the price of the exams been determined? Yes, the uh, price for a member of either association or both associations is $250. If you're a non-member of either association, then it would be $350. And renewals, I believe, are 200 and 300, as I recall. Do you need to be working in an AWT facility to qualify and renew the certificate? Um, the requirement to qualify is that you have advanced water treatment unit processes experience with the grades four and five it is not required all you're required for grade three is that you hold a advanced uh, a um, state issued treatment certification from water or drink uh, wastewater and to renew the certificate you just need to continue the um, contact hours as as identified earlier 24. okay cost of exams already addressed Cost exams we addressed. Um, do AWT pilot projects qualify as AWT process experience? The application will identify the same table of unit um, AWT processes that Yen Zheng covered earlier, and you'll have an opportunity to identify your time uh, on task in those areas and whatever supervisory uh, notes can be provided or job descriptions be provided to identify um, those aspects. So early on is the grade three, no experience is required other than that you were able to achieve the uh, state certifications. And then grades four, you need two years in one or more AWT processes. And grade five, you need three years, two of which could be with one or more. And the, thir the third year has to be with at least two AWT processes. So if your pilot projects meet those requirements, um, then, then the pilot process is acceptable. We're not requiring permitted plant per se, we're requiring AWT processes. Have the grades been beta tested? Uh, the answer is no. Um, if so, what were the pass rates for each grade? The uh, process that we're using because of the minimum number of uh, likely candidates for this emerging field, we're using a modified ANGOF method of evaluating a um, passing score, and we have a number of subject matter experts that are addressing that even as we speak. And so the passing scores have not yet been de determined for grade three, four, or five. Next question, does overseeing the operations and maintenance of any AWG processes count towards the experience component? I have overseen, managed the operations of treatment with UV, membrane, and um, and currently a treatment facility for manganese removal. So yes, um, Brian, the, the experience that you have will be mapped up against those, um, that table, uh, and Alka is doing a wonderful job of, of keeping up with the uh, slides. So if you could go to the table that Yen um, represent, represented that was the ABWT processes, that would be great. The, <coughs> Next question is, I have operated a couple membrane plants. Uh, my California D5, T5 work right now to operate these facilities. Why not add this new technology to the existing processes? The situation that we have with regard to an existing California or Nevada four, three, four, or five is that neither state currently has a significant number of questions or items on their exams dealing with these advanced water treatment processes, and thank you, Alec. Um, therefore, that's why this certification is coming out, is because this is not an area being assessed by state certifications, and therefore, simply having that doesn't put you in that position, but having that does prepare you to address it, but you'll need in your application to identify each of these uh, areas that you have experienced work in and document the two or three years of experience for grades four and five. No years of experience are required other than having a grade three from the state to sit for the grade three. Scrolling down. Um, are contact hours additional to what is already required for um, current certs? And the answer to that is no. You may have, you may submit the same contact hours to the state of California or the state of Nevada 
as to the um, California, Nevada, and CWA AWTO certification, the requirements will be a slightly different in that the state certifications don't require that you have contact hours directly dealing with advanced water treatment processes. And the, out of the 24 hours, no more than 25% of those 24 hours can be in safety, similar to state certifications. And at least 25% of those 24 hours need to be in uh, topics dealing with advanced water treatment processes. And so that would be the, the difference and overlap uh, between the, the two programs. Uh, what are your thoughts on the AWT certification becoming <coughs> state mandated for IPR plants? And the thoughts we have on that would be contact your local state, California, Nevada, whomever it might be. Um, as industry certifications and voluntary, we don't address that directly. That is a, a state decision. Um, I would imagine, similar to the fact that CWEA started the wastewater treatment plant operator certification, as did California, Nevada, AWWA for treatment and distribution in our area. Uh, and eventually they were taken over by the state uh, so that they became state mandated to have a state certification. But those are decisions uh, outside of our severe responsibility and control. Will the passing percentage results following each exam be posted? Um, what we will be doing is identifying for each candidate what their um, pass-fail status was, and we will have um, some summary information available uh, for review by our uh, two associations and our governance board. No discussion has yet been made as to whether those uh, percentages will be made as a public statement, but it's an interesting question, and I'll take it up with our joint coordinating committee, which is the made up of our two associations, staff and volunteer leaders. Is there a possibility that these certifications will be extended to states outside of California and Nevada in the future? Certainly that is a possibility. <clears throat> the states that are most engaged right now have awareness of what we're doing. I've been called upon to make presentations to boards at various states, either the um, state boards or the section boards or the water reuse um, board for that particular state. So those presentations are going on. In Texas, I can offer that the Texas section of AWWA currently has a certificate program that they're in the midst of developing and they are submitting their course content and certificate um, development process to their um, division of environmental quality and they're getting that kind of um, evaluation, but whether this particular certification will be adopted or um, adapted by other states is unknown at this time. Certainly we are willing to be a, a model for others to, to follow. Will this webinar be available on the website or YouTube so I can show my coworkers? Yes, it is being recorded right now. So the intent is to have this webinar available as a link on the awtoperator.org website. Did I skip any that you could tell, Alec? Well, technology being it was, my Q&A is frozen, so. Um. Oh, well, in that case, at this point, I don't see any that I missed, um, but I'm, I'm open to additional questions that might come in. While I wait for any others to arrive, I dearly appreciate all of your interest and the time and talent of our um, panelists who were taking time to share with you the information that they did. Um, we look forward to additional questions that might arise. There is intent to create a frequently asked question, such as the contact hour one or the cost one that uh, came up, uh, so that that information can be provided on our AWT operator org website as well. You're encouraged to go to that website and express interest to be included in the mailing list. That is our positive opt-in approach so that you can be notified of additional information as it comes out. Whether that's information based on the candidate handbook or on the uh, workshops that the two associations might be offering, or other materials, uh, we'll, we'll keep you posted. 
Toby, you want to take us out? Um, that, that concludes the webinar. And it looks like there is a lot of interest in this program with all of your participation on this webinar. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, uh, to listen to what we have to offer. And um, with that, I uh, conclude the webinar. Thanks, Toby. Great job, Fernando, Jan, and Stephen. Great webinar. Take care. Yeah, thank you for having me. And I apologize for all the technical difficulties. Like anything in life, it, it was at, towards the end that we could figure out how to access this whole thing. Yeah, you know, Fernando, I had your slides up, so it, it worked perfectly. It all works out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I was blind. I was just, you know, going over my notes. But thank you very much, everyone. You did, you did great. Thanks for that, Fernando. All right, Thank take you. care. Thank you. Bye.